Hey guys, I'm John, and in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to create a Tetris style or falling block style game in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, and certainly there are far more lightweight solutions or uh, more efficient solutions uh, that you could use to create this style of game. But I'm going to use Unreal Engine 5 uh, just sort of to explore uh, creating a game outside of the first person or third person or open world or you know, the really popular genres that uh, developers kind of gravitate towards nowadays. Uh, so this is obviously more in the uh, puzzle genre and uh, I'm just going to create uh, a basic playing field here and a basic actor that's going to be our falling block and uh, we'll introduce uh, the line detection uh, for completed lines and uh, scoring and etc. Alright, so I'm going to get started here. I've opened up a new blank project in Unreal Engine 5 and by default you get this open world level so I'm just going to go to file, new level, uh, empty level and create and uh, what I'll do is just save this first. I'll go to File, Save Current Level as um, My Map. And uh, I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings, Maps and Modes, and I'll just select My Map as the starting level. Okay, uh, and so the first thing that I want to create here is the base class for the Tetramino or the Falling Block. And so I'll just right click here. Uh, and I'm going to make a new blueprint class, a new actor, and I'll call this B underscore falling block. And in the original game, there's seven different Tetramino shapes, and they're each made up of four squares. Um, of course, it's a 2D game, and I'm doing a 3D version here, so I'm going to add four cubes to my actor. And so I'll select the default scene route here, and I'm going to add a static mesh. Uh, and I'll just call this one cube one. And for the static mesh here, I'm going to uh, select this drop down and I'm going to select this cog wheel, show engine content, and I'm going to find a cube from the engine called sm underscore cube underscore zero one. And so this is a cube that's used uh, in the VR editor, uh, but I'm going to borrow it for this game. And it has this material applied to it, this material instance um, with this glow color exposed as a vector parameter value. Uh, and that's that deep yellow color basically that's around the border here. And we can adjust that uh, color to change the color of these blocks. And we're going to do that in a little bit here. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I want to duplicate this. Uh, so I'm going to select cube one, control D, and I'll press enter to accept the name cube two. Control D again, enter, and control D again, enter. So I've got now this cube one, cube two, cube three, cube four. Uh, and rather than manually move these around and create the shapes, uh, what I'm going to do is we'll create these shapes procedurally in the construction script. And the construction script uh, works just like the uh, begin play on the event graph, except that you don't have to be playing the game. This will run in the editor. I can run this uh, every time I compile the actor, we'll run the construction script or even dragging it around the scene will run the construction script. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to create all the different possible shapes. Uh, so I want to create a random integer here. We'll say random integer in range. Uh, and I'll just start out really simple here. Let's say we'll get a random number between 0 and 1. And from the return value here, I'm going to get a switch. And I'll plug this in. And I'll add the pins here for 0 and 1. And what I want to do is we're going to move cube 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to leave cube 1 where it is in the middle here. And we'll adjust the offset here of cube 2, 3, and 4 to make the various shapes. Uh, so I'm going to drag in a reference here for cube 2. And I'll drag off of that and say add local offset. Uh, and then I'll just plug that in here to 0. And I'll use control D to duplicate that, plug it in, and drag the reference for cube 3 here. And uh, again, I'm going to duplicate the, and then I'm going to duplicate the uh, add local offset node one more time. And uh, I'll drag over the reference for cube 4. Okay. Uh, and so now uh, what I'll do is, let's say on uh, zero, we'll create, I'm just going to comment this and say make line block. So the line block is uh, four blocks or squares in a row. And uh, you could 
build that out vertically or horizontally, it doesn't really matter, we'll be able to rotate it later. So I'm gonna choose um, vertically. And by the way, the cube here that I borrowed from the engine, this SM cube 01, it happens to have a size of 50 centimeters in each dimension, 50 units. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and offset the first, the second cube here will offset in the Z axis by 50. And the third cube will offset in the Z axis by 100 and the fourth cube by 150. And so uh, if I go ahead and compile this, there we go, we can see we've arranged the cubes in the, in the order for the line block. And uh, so what I'll do next here is uh, for, we'll just grab all of these nodes here and I'm gonna go over here and press Control D and we'll plug these into number one uh, and I'll just change the comment here and we'll say uh, maybe make L block. And so the L block's actually very similar to the line block. We wanna move the first, uh, the second cube up vertically by one, uh, third cube vertically by two, so 50 and 100. And then the last cube, we wanna move it horizontally by one. So we'll put this back to zero and set the Y value to 50. All right, so let's check it out here. We'll go to the viewport, compile, and there we've got our L shape. All right, and so uh, what I wanna do now before I make the rest of the shapes here is I wanna add a color component. So I wanna change the color of each block based on which shape that it is, just like in the original game. And uh, that maybe makes it easier to uh, quickly identify which block you've got when, when the pace of the game is really fast. Um, or maybe it's just for aesthetic purposes. So I'm just gonna make some extra room here. And uh, what I wanna do is uh, introduce a new variable. I'm gonna add a variable called block color. And I'm gonna set the variable type to linear color. And uh, I'll just drag this in here. I'm gonna hold Alt while I release to get a set node. And I'm just gonna set the color manually here. Um, you know, for let's say uh, the line block, let's say the color could be yellow. All right, uh, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll just grab this node and control D to duplicate. And for the L block, we'll set the color to maybe red. All right, and so uh, basically I'm just gonna go ahead and create the rest of the shapes here. And there are a total of seven. So I'm gonna change this to a random integer between zero and six. And I'll add the rest of the pins here. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all of these nodes, uh, control D to duplicate, and uh, control D to duplicate again. And I need just one more, so I'll grab just a single set of nodes, control D. All right, and maybe we'll move these nodes more to the center here so it's a bit easier to plug all of these in. Okay. And uh, so the rest of the blocks we need here are the S block, um, the reverse S block, and the T block, and the square block. Uh, so I'll go ahead here and let's make, uh, and we also need the reverse L. So we'll say, we'll start with that one, reverse uh, L block. And so it's going to be, uh, We'll go vertically by one, vertically by two, and then horizontally uh, the other way, so minus 50. Uh, and I'll just set this to a new color here. Maybe I'll pick orange. Uh, we'll make sure that's different enough from the yellow and the red. Okay, and uh, next here we'll say make uh, S block. And for the S block, we'll move uh, one block uh, vertically by one and another block uh, vertically by one and horizontally by one and uh, another block horizontally by one and vertically by two. And we'll set the color for the S block to uh, maybe pink and uh, we'll make the reverse uh, S block here. Um, so that's going to be the same as the S block, but we'll use minus 50 
uh, on the y-axis. Uh, so this is going to be minus 50 and 100. All right, and the reverse S block will pick uh, maybe this uh, blue color. All right, and uh, so now we'll make, uh, let's say, the T block. So we want to add, uh, let's say we'll use 0 on Z and move uh, horizontally by negative one and another one here zero on the z and horizontally uh, by plus one so 50 and uh, this one will stay uh, in the center horizontally but move vertically by one so 50 and the t block will set the color here maybe to this teal all right and one left here we'll make the uh, square block and uh, for that one we just need to arrange them in a square so I'll move uh, the first block say vertically by one sure and uh, the next block will say horizontally by one and the uh, last block horizontally and vertically by one each okay and for the square block I'll set the color maybe to green uh, now for the color to actually take effect we need to do one more thing here I'm just going to drag from uh, one of these nodes and we'll say uh, vector parameter, oops, uh, let's see here I want to set vector parameter value on materials, uh, cube 1, I'll select, but I can actually plug all the rest of these cubes in here as well, cube 2, uh, cube 3, and cube 4. Okay, uh, and I'll just drag these out a little bit here. We want to set the parameter name here to glow color. And so that was the, we'll go back to the uh, cube here and take a look at that material real quick again. Glow color is the name of this uh, vector parameter value affecting the outside uh, color. So we're setting glow color and we're going to feed in our block color. Oops, it needs to convert here, so I'll just drag that here, drag that here, and it makes a conversion node for me automatically. Okay, and I just need to plug in the rest of these uh, execution nodes. So uh, no matter which block uh, it creates, afterwards it's going to use that block color that we set and uh, send that to as a new vector parameter to the material. Okay, um, so if I've done everything right here, we should be able to make all of our different Tetramino shapes by just compiling and seeing these uh, at random. All right, uh, and uh, yeah, it seems to be working pretty good here. We're seeing all of our different shapes. And the other thing I can do is I can drag one of these into my scene here. And uh, even just dragging it around here, we can see we're randomly getting all the, the different shapes. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the uh, position of this block, uh, let's say to uh, 0 and 0, and uh, let's say on the uh, z-axis we'll put it at maybe 1,000. So it starts off uh, up here in the air, and it's going to start dropping down towards the ground, and we're going to create, uh, in the next video here, we're going to create functionality for the block to start dropping towards the ground, and create uh, sort of a playing area for it to land on. All right, so uh, that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.